Okay, so for the bell ringer here, number 42, we're supposed to order these from least to greatest. So we'll take care of the negative numbers first because obviously they'll be less than any positive number or any absolute value, which is a positive number. So I have negative six and negative one. Negative six is less than negative one, so they go in that order. Now I've got two, four, and 10. Two is the lesser of all of those, or the least of all those, I should say. But I don't write two, I write the absolute value of two because that's what they gave me in the problem. Then four, and finally, the largest thing here would be 10, but I don't write 10, I write the absolute value of negative 10 because that's what they gave me in the problem. For number 43, again, I take care of my negatives first. I have two of them. I've got a negative three and a negative eight. Negative eight is less, so I put that first, followed by the negative three. Now I can take care of these. I have zero, three, and four. Zero is the least, so I'll put the absolute value of zero because that's what they gave me in the problem. Then three, that's just three, and Four, but this is the absolute value of negative four, is how they wrote it. And finally, for number 44, take care of the negatives first. I have negative two, negative five, negative seven. Well, negative seven is the coldest, if all those were temperatures, followed by negative five, and the warmest out of these negative temperatures would be negative two. Now I've got a five and a two. This I get it, it says negative two, but it's the absolute value of negative two, and we know that is two. So absolute value of negative two, and finally the largest thing here is a five, which is the absolute value of five. And they're, they're in order from least to greatest. Hey, this is lesson 1.5, which is on page 30 in your textbook, and um, this is just dividing integers and we just did multiplying integers with the last lesson. This is the same rule. Of course, you're dividing instead of multiplying, though. So dividing integers with the same sign. The quotient, or the answer, of two integers with the same sign is positive. So 8 divided by 2 equals 4. Notice they're both positive, so my answer is positive. Here, negative 8 divided by negative 2 equals 4. Same sign, positive. So when we're multiplying and, I mean, or dividing, same sign, positive. And different sign, negative. Dividing integers with different signs. The quotient of two integers with different signs is negative. Eight divided by negative two, I have different signs, so my answer is negative four. Negative eight divided by two, different signs, so my answer is negative four. Let's look at a couple of examples. It says negative 18 divided by negative 6. Same sign, so I know my answer is going to be positive. 18 divided by 6 is 3, so it's positive 3. With different signs, I have 75 divided by negative 25. Well, I know 75 divided by 25 equals 3, but I have different signs, so my answer is negative 3. This is a way of showing division. Negative 54 divided by 6. Well, I know 54 divided by 6 is 9, but I have one of each. So my answer is negative 9. Here's a couple of problems for you to do. Okay, let's look at these. Number 1 is 14 divided by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. And they're the same sign, so it's just positive 7. Number 2, negative 32 divided by negative 4. Well, 32 divided by 4 is 8. And same sign, so it's positive 8. 40 divided by, I mean, negative 40 divided by negative 8. So 40 divided by 8 equals 5. Same sign again, so it's positive 5. Here we have 0 divided by negative 6. It's okay to divide zero by numbers. Anytime we divide zero by anything, we get zero for an answer. Here we have negative 49 divided by seven. Well, 49 divided by seven is seven. And I have one of each here, 
One's negative and one is positive. That makes my answer negative. Here, 21 divided by negative three. Well, 21 divided by three is seven. And again, I have one of each. So my answer is negative. Well, this third example is evaluating an expression. So they give us evaluate 10 minus x squared divided by y when x equals eight and y equals negative four. So the first thing we do is we substitute in eight for our x and negative four in for our y, which makes this problem 10 minus eight squared, because it was x squared, eight squared, divided by negative four. Going from left to, oh, well, for following order of operations, there were no parentheses with anything to do anything in, no operations in, so we go to exponents, and we do have an exponent, eight times eight, eight times eight is 64, okay? So now we have 10 minus 64 divided by negative four. I don't do that subtraction yet because order of operation says multiply and divide from left to right. So I get this division taken care of. Negative 64 divided by negative four is the way I would do it. They have minus 64 divided by negative four. Either way works as long as you watch the signs here. So 64 divided by negative four gives us negative 16. So now I have 10 minus negative 16. Of course, I make that a big plus. 10 plus 16 is 26. Let's try a couple of these. Well, on these problems, A equals negative 18 and B equals negative six. So they give us the problem A divided by B, and what we have to do is substitute these values in. This becomes negative 18 divided by negative six. Well, 18 divided by six is three, same sign, so it's gonna be a positive three. For number eight, we substitute in a plus six over three becomes, instead of a plus six, it would be negative 18 plus six over three. Well, the first thing we have to do here, this fraction bar, also called a vinculum, is a grouping symbol, kind of like parentheses. We're supposed to simplify everything on the top and simplify everything on the bottom before we move on. So negative 18 plus six, different signs. So I subtract the numbers and get 12. And I keep it negative because I had a bigger absolute value on my negative number. So negative 12 over three, or negative 12 divided by three. Uh, 12 divided by three equals four but I have one of each, a positive and a negative, and that makes my answer negative four. Finally, I have number nine here, and on number nine, I substitute in, it says b squared over a plus four. Well, b is negative six, and I'm squaring whatever b is, so negative six, that means the negative six has to stay a negative six. So I put that in parentheses to square it over what was a negative 18. So negative 18 plus four. Well, I'll square this up top first. Negative six times negative six would be a positive 36 over negative 18 plus four still. And then finally, I do this division first. This four is not on top of this vinculum, so I don't simplify the top first. That four is not part of it. 36 divided by 18 is two, but I have one of each, so it's a negative two plus four. And negative two plus four, different sign subtract, keep the sign of the larger number part, which would be my positive. So my answer is negative two.